Hello, my name is Zach and welcome to the second episode of the video series Early Spoken Afrikaans. In this video series, I show you early examples of Afrikaans with a quick summary for context and a recorded performance, hence the name Early Spoken Afrikaans. In the first episode, I showed you a poem which depicted the boastful Dutch colonists and their incorrect verb and pronoun use and their misplaced bravery in the face of oncoming cannonballs. Lied 1795, the first example of Afrikaans, though not directly intended as such by the anonymous poet, as the idea of Afrikaans as a language separate from Dutch did not exist yet in the mind of linguists and colonists at that time. But something did start happening in the Cape Colony in the 1830s. People started noticing the difference between the spoken Dutch in the Netherlands and the spoken Dutch in the Cape Colony. People began documenting this dialect spoken amongst the inhabitants of the Cape Colony. And one striking set of examples documenting this dialect, this early example of Afrikaans, appeared as rebuttals, counter-arguments against criticism from an English missionary who criticized the Cape Colony's inhabitants and their magistrate. Reverend Dr. John Phillips, a Scottish minister from Aberdeen, was a civil rights activist who lobbied for indigenous and colored people's rights in the Cape Colony. Dr. Philip was, in short, a very controversial man. On the one hand, he inspired philanthropic sentiment from the British public with his lecture tours and the book that he wrote, Researches into Southern Africa, which describes the cruelty and injustice that many indigenous a mixed race people experienced at the hands of the colonist community. He was also instrumental in the repeal of the Hottentot Proclamation, which was a par system that limited mixed race and indigenous people's freedom of movement in the colony outside of their workplace. But on the other hand, he was widely unpopular in the Cape Colony. They often labeled him as a mischief maker who'd lie and use false evidence and political intrigue to further his goals. In his book, Researches into Southern Africa, he accuses a magistrate of abusing his powers and punishing a local and his family with three years servitude. Let's check that out. Conduct of the Landrost of Somerset. The Landrost of Somerset had some time previously sent a Hottentot with his wagon to bring him some goods from another village. Unfortunately for the Hottentot, there happened to be a small cask of Cape brandy among the goods. And in other respects, a useful and faithful servant, he could not resist the temptation thus placed within his reach. He tapped the barrel and drank part of the liquor. The theft was readily discovered and the culprit was punished by flogging and imprisonment. Most masters would have been satisfied with this, but not so this worshipful magistrate. He only released the man from prison in order to place him, his wife and family under contract to a person in the village for a period of three years at the rate of 10 rix dollars per annum, with the further provision that no part of this pittance of wages should be paid to this man or his family, but that it should be paid over in advance by the new master to himself the magistrate, in compensation for the brandy which the Hottentot had drunk. This book and the many accusations within it sent the Cape Colony into a frenzy. The mentioned magistrate, W. M. McKay from Somerset, went 
and pursued a libel suit against Dr. Philip for the amount of £1,000. This court case was closely followed by the public in the newspapers, and this led to an example of early Afrikaans, a letter written by Adam Slocker to his uncle Wimke Vido, questioning the various accusations made in Dr. Philip's book. Um, Kavido, that spite mein alte danach dat ik hoort dat fluffies te danach outgebrand word in de krante. Hulle zag dat hy zo banje logens geskryf het in een boek. Rach, Um, Kavido, ik is al te danach jammer voor fluffies, maar dat zeg ik, als dit waar is, dan is hy maar wat hulle zeg. Want om, waarom moet hij homself aanstel als de mensen zijn friend en dan nog van hulle een kwaai boek gaan maak? Ik word rechtig kwaad als ik denk dat dat waar is. Om, als je flippie ziet, vraag toch waarom hoe duur dat de drank is bij Sweldam. Ik hoor mos dat hij daar in die kantine was bij een jong. Zeg voor hem dat de drank hier zo te danen goedkoop zijn. Zet pens voor een bottel. <laughs> om, hulle zeg in die krant dat in die boek staat dat die christen mensen ons uit de kerk jaag. Dat is toch een stinkende loop. Om, als ik mijn hart moet recht zeg, ik moet die krant amper geloof. Want waarom komt er niks tegen van flippies? Ik hoor, hij het flippies voor de kort, voor zijn logens, en dat hij moers gespok het om daar af te komen, maar dat was verniet. Om, nog wat, waarom moet hij zo vals rapport? Hij zag ons hot en ons drink niet drank nie. Die heire moet bij die kantine komen, dan zal hij zien. Dronkenlappen, zwijren in Zwitser, bakleislagen, ruziemakers en die meeste van die volkers van beide Laarsdorp. Om, ik verwacht jouw antwoord en bleef jouw knappe neef. Adam Slokker. The news editor of the newspaper De Zuid Afrikaan, a Charles Boniface, was heavily against the portrayal of the colonists and the indigenous people in John Philip's book. He was so against John Philip's portrayal that he once referred to his book Researches into Southern Africa as libel on South Africa. But here is where this story becomes very intriguing. The person mentioned to have been forced into servitude, a Hendrik Koch, was tracked down by Boniface and he published in the Zeit Afrikaan a two-part interview wherein Hendrik refutes Dr. Philip's accusations against Magistrate McKay. Hendrik proceeds to tell his recollection of the events. And with this interview, we get the perfect example of the interviewer speaking Dutch whilst the interviewee answers in Afrikaans. No, kijk sir. Ik zal de zoon nu graag wel zeggen hoe hij toegegaan is. Die tijd was ik banjes gelmachtig. Dat is waar. Ik was die tijd bij een moonjoy verried. Op een dag moest ik met zijn wagen een halve brandewijn naar Somerset gaan brengen. Nou, een mens is toch maar een mens. Ik was zo alleenig. Zo Christus heel alleenig. Geen maat om een beetje mee te praten langs die pad. En doos kreeg ik ook daarbij. Ja, wat zal een mens doen? Ik dacht zo in mijn eenigheid. Daar is brandewijn in die vaart. Ik had zo'n hoering bij mij. Weet ze, zo'n beste hoering had ik bij mij. Ik het een gegaan in een bijte 
van die brandewijn geteld. Maar nie een banje nie, zomaar een hoering val en toegedronke. Ja! Naderhand weet ze, het ek nog een beetje gedronke. Ja! En ja, toe kreeg ek eers lis om te drinke, want die branne wijn oh, smakkel te danig lekker. Ah. Further in the interview, Hendrik is asked about the magistrate's reaction to the theft of his cognac and whether he was as cruelly punished as described by Dr. Philip, to which he responds. Nee, een slag of stout het ek van hom gekry. Anders nie as het hy my na die tron gestuur is al. Ach sir, maar toch nie alles geloof wat die mensen zeg. Hulle lieg, hulle kan bezachtig lieg die mense. Moet vir hulle nie geloof nie. Anders nie as wat hy toe vir my sê. Hendrik, my sê hy, Jy bent vert overschellen. Jy het my brandewijn gesuip. Nou recht moes ek op jou schouwers laat spoelen, maar ek is jammer dat jy so oud is. Pas op, dat jy nie weer dat doet. Kijk, dat is alles wat hy toch my gesê het. This interview carries on for several more pages, and it not only serves as a good counter-argument against Dr. Phillips' accusations, but it also serves as an example of early Afrikaans where the writer consciously wrote in the style of the spoken Dutch with the pronunciation and the word order, making this the first example of somebody consciously writing in what we can consider today Afrikaans. In the end, Landros McKay won the court case, and the question arises whether Dr. Philip was truly, fully honest in his portrayal of the colonists in his book, and whether he employed cunning to reach his goals. But what remains true of John Phillips is that he continued steadfast in his mission, lobbying on behalf of indigenous people for civil rights in the Cape Colony. And that is that for this episode of Early Spoken Afrikaans. Folks, I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.